Okay, Colonel, that basically um, runs through the first charge that, that was made against you. Um, so if the words, if you say that you didn't and utter the words, and, I, and yeah, basically from what I see, I'm not going further with it. The second charge um, that was laid against you, I see there's a first alternative, second alternative, much, much like the first charge, and the third alternative deals with um, common law criminal injuria. Now, once again, the allegation is that around about the 6th of February 2001, you uttered the words, you are a racist, and I hate racists. Um, if I may ask, sir, were there any other members present um, during the time that you were alleged to have uttered these words? Uh, it's the same, the same as a scenario, if you like, of the previous uh, charges and the alternatives. That was myself, Kenneth Lenance, in his office, his deputy, uh, Colonel um, Raymond Linsui, and Major Martley, the course leader. Okay. Um, Colonel, if I may ask this, and this is very important, was or were any of the words in terms of the relationship with racist or racism um, linking that to Colonel Kleinotz? Was it ever uttered outside of the room to anybody else? Or was it uttered to him directly to his face? Insofar as the allegation against me, it is not true. Okay. But I can tell you that the allegations that he was racist were flying around in the school. That is why he got peeved and went in front of the class. Uh, he was peeved because he, that the, 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 uh, the assault was led by the, the course leader. And uh, correction, I want to reverse that. It was led by the, 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 the course chairman. The major matter was there. He was the one who was saying he acts in a racial way. He, is, uh, he treats uh, white students with kid gloves and all that kind of allegation. When the white students, by the way, I'm sorry to dilate a bit, because the white students were blaming the, the, the course chairman of being uh, protective of the major was having sex on the college with uh, Raymond Lindsay. That I can, I can attest that I'm a witness to that. Okay. Um, Colonel, and with that, so there was not only a racist feeling with members on the course, but, they, but would you then also describe it that there was a tension feeling in terms of race between, um, shall we say, the staff and course members as well as instructors? Oh yes, the, 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 the instructors were, 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 as far as the black students were concerned, the way they view it and my senses of it uh, was that uh, the instructors, particularly uh, Kenneth Leydans, was leading a racial attitude towards black students. That was the feeling, even prior to this. I just get the feeling the charge is here to try and blame me for all the allegations we were making other students against Leydans to make me the fall guy, like I say. Uh, so the feeling was fairly negative. The reason why I'm actually asking it, sir, because criminal injuria has got certain prerequisites for it, and I'm just trying to find out whether, um, if it was said to the person to his face, that cannot that cannot be classified as criminal injuria. However, if it was said outside the class, um, shall we say, where a rumor is being spread about somebody, then it can constitute. But if it's said to a person's face, then it is an opinion. One can say anything to somebody to his face as long as one does not say it, um, shall we say, behind his back that it has got an influence. Um, the second one is also that, that one would also find that the criminal injuria must be of a nature where if it is common knowledge, um, for instance, I cannot, if I call a prostitute that is a known prostitute, a hooker, she cannot sue me because that is in fact her job, that is her career. So in the same way, if one, um, if the situation was already in such a nature that it was common knowledge, but let, can, I, can I ask you in another way, um, do you feel that Colonel Kleinhans's position or his status within the school was either adversely or negatively influenced by statements like that? In your opinion, you mean his behavior in particular, where he uh, got involved? You want yes. to know if he was he was influenced by these? Uh, or shall we say, would you would you say that the rumors um, that were going around with him being a racist, would you say that was positive, or would you say it was negative? Did that influence his career or or the way that he operated the school in any way? <laughs> I think Colonel Clean Clean House will go to the grave 
uh, 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 regretting what happened on that course because this thing is published on the mass media is in the internet um, if you ask me if it was correct for anybody to call me racist I would say it was not correct <coughs> you understand thank you sir um, thank you and but he's standing per se so when the course was over and everybody had gone home to the respective units the standing within the school had not really changed. It was no better, it was no worse. I think it was worse. I, do, I, th I think it was worse and I feel sad for him wherever he is because it could affect him for the, like I said, uh, the rest of his life. But I think where he made a mistake, and there I'm not afraid to say it in record, he made a mistake by fearing a major who is a student in his class just because the student is a relative of or she claims to be a relative of General Matazum and Nelson Mandela. That was a mistake. She was supposed to take on that soldier and say, you cannot sleep in quarters of the Army College and have sex with an instructor of mine and take both of them in. But he was like pussyfooting because of the politicization of the Army, I'm sorry to say. Right. When the alleged criminal injuria statement was supposed to have made, um, have, have been made by you, um, was there any reply? What was Colonel Clanons's reply to it? What was his reaction to it? We had a very civil and, uh, on my part, a respectable attitude um, uh, towards him when I addressed him. Although I did express my, you know, my my. Uh, uh, what is the word? I was not happy the way he singled me out on an issue. I was not even involved. I was not even sleeping at the quarters where these accusations against him were being cooked. I was a day scholar. Everyone was sleeping on the course, so I expressed that. And um, I can tell you though that when I t saluted him at the end of the. Of, the, of that uh, engagement. I walked down, his office was a, a floor above. I walked down the steps after giving him compliments, I walked down, he did shout at me from his office again. He said, Colonel Peary, Colonel Peary, aren't you at least going to salute me before you go? That was very strange. But I realized what he was getting at. I imagine he was, because everybody was hearing on the corridors. I realized, no, he was creating the impression that I disrespect. So I walked up the steps again and saluted the colonel for the second time. So that I must mention. So he, there, was, there was no real, um, when this alleged remark was supposed to have been made, it wasn't that he got angry. It was more that he got, he was... He was not angry. Uh, colonel Clarence is a gentleman in half. Even, even when... When now I was being called by him a month later, after the IGs put everything, he was together with now General Drost, he was soft-spoken. I have a feeling in my bones that the person who led Kenyon Clinans to fabricate, I'm sorry he did, these charges was General Drost. I must put that on record. Okay. Alrighty. Um, and with that, I am finished with the second batch of charges as well as the alternative. Colonel, any questions from your side? Yeah, let me start with on, the, on this day, the, the 6th, when we were in the office of uh, Kenneth Kenyans, with whom were you in, the, in that office of Kenneth Kenyans when the statement of racist was, was alleged to be said by you? It was myself, Kenneth Kenyans, and in his office again, and as well as uh, the sidekick or deputy to Kenneth Kenyans, Raymond Atulang uh, Linsui, a colonel, and the, as, uh, the fourth person was Major Martley. He was later promoted to be a lieutenant colonel as well. Why were you in, in, in uh, Kenneth Kenyans' office? I had requested to see Kenneth Kenyans to express my displeasure at the way he, you know, put down my rank in front of majors and said I want to pass by virtue of being a black person because now there's a black president in the country. I felt it was an affront. I'm not a very prized student, but I'm one of the most hardworking student uh, people you can find around. I wanted to earn, I still want to earn my course. I don't want to pass because somebody favors me or I'm related to anybody big. So I went there to express my displeasure at that. I, I get the feeling that maybe Kenneth Clenas didn't like me taking the initiative of going respect to his office. That's why there were these fabrications. But we are together with the, 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 the course leader. Yeah, I, 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 was, I actually asked the course chairperson, Major Martin, to go and make me the appointment. He went to uh, Raymond Lins to the colonel, and the colonel went to the bigger colonel, uh, cleaners. The, every appointment was made. So I left the office together with Major Martin. We went and uh, took along with us uh, uh, Colonel Raymond Lins. Then the three of us entered the office of... of, of All right, of, you, 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 you expressed yourself uh, in front of Colonel uh, Clinans while the, the other three uh, members were also there. Yes, when, when I expressed myself in front of Kirk Lennon's, Major Matley was seated there, 
Colonel um, Raymond Lin Sui was also there. So they were, they were, they were the four of us. Now, uh, what, 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 how did you conclude the uh, conversation uh, in, in that office? Pretty amicable. Pretty amicable as far as I'm concerned because I wasn't there anyway to go and heap praises on, on, on Kenyan cleaners. I was there to complain. He may, uh, at some stage he told me, uh, and, and, and that's where his statement gets some scintilla of truth. He says, he says, uh, I was like telling him how to do his job. He complained that I cannot be suggesting how he must do his job. I said, with due respect, Kenel, I'm not here to tell you about the job. It's about the statement you made in the class that Kenel Piri wants to pass. He doesn't want to work by virtue because he's a black person. Uh, so he was very much unhappy about that part. He, he didn't expect me to come to his office the way I saw it. But now this uh, allegation of uh, you are a racist, uh, how did it come out now? during that conversation? It wasn't uttered by me. I never uttered such words, like I've said earlier. But the background was of counter accusations prior to that, even prior to him coming to the, in front of the course of the class, that was the issue of racism on the BL newspaper all over. Hence, the chief of the army sent the, uh, the IG there. These are not my words. But uh, Colonel Clinance himself, how did he present himself to to yourself, did you, did, you, did you see him as a racist or did you see him as a person? He is not a racist. I, I can repeat that he is not a racist, but he is a weak leader because he has fears among his, he has some of his subordinates that he fears to confront on the basis of their connections to senior political leaders. And we cannot lead the military on the basis of political connections. What war are we going to fight that way? No, thanks, no further questions. Okay. But also, basically, I just want to summarize um, the atmosphere when you left Colonel Kleinhans's office. It was was it amicable or was it tense or did you feel that something had been resolved? I felt it has been resolved. I only got a word that something might cook up when he called me the second time. Said, "Am I not at least going to salute him?" I, I, then I went back to make sure that he sees I'm saluting him. You will realize that later there are charges that I never saluted, and even Colonel uh, Judge in our General Ross had certain, uh, you know, as a witness. So um, I was happy. I was I was comfortable with the, the, the way things went. Okay. Thank you, Colonel.